Hey, everybody. I am uh, Admiral Dummy Scoville, the uh, the captain's old man, and you are on the lifeboat. What's happening? Shall we do a little roll call? Janet G. Hey, it's Charlie Murphy. What's happening, Charlie? Good to see you, my brother. Bacon Bits, Ben Turner, Jason P., Shannon Smith. What's happening? Matrix Rabbit. I saw a Matrix Rabbit in there. Demon. Good to see you. Gidget's World. Lori Hart. Still can't type. Oh, well, you know. Happens to the best of us. Riley's Human. Hope Riley is having a good day. Janet G., good to see you. Mara. Mara, thanks for your kindness. A beautiful handkerchief. This is the uh, the life that I've been pimping nonstop, if you want to know the truth. Yes, Johnny is, uh, you're loving the hat. Uh, you know what this is? This is the, uh, the hat. Lumen, good to see you. This is the hat that keeps the uh, top of my head. You know, if you held it like that, we wouldn't even have to see your grill. I know, I like, Look at that. I we could, could keep it just like you that. You hang this from the ceiling. I could just sit here. Right. Save you guys so much trouble. Or you know what we could do is just, we could hire somebody to play you. It would be a lot cheaper than paying the, the Johnny Scoville. I could get a stand-in or something. Speaking mm -hmm. of, you rolled me for two back shows. Is that right? Jeez. That it sucks. Yeah. Things are a little tight right now. Fancy Nancy. That would be East Coast Fancy Nancy. Yep, another Maria. That's just what we needed. Another Maria. Moonstone. Good to see you. Shannon Smith. Wait. Hey, Christy Hughes. Christy, thank you so much for all that you do. You are so kind. And you know what? I'm glad to see your name, man. I was praying for you yesterday. Okay, right? So was Johnny. We, uh, we we said your name out loud as soon as the uh, the reports came in that um, that missiles were flying. Your name came up really, really quickly, and I'm glad to see that you're here. Uh, and that's uh, Lisa Trimble. Good to see it. That goes for uh, that goes for everybody around the world. But you uh, you came to mind um, pretty quickly. Um. Getting used to saying uh, Admiral. I don't know that I'll ever get used to saying Admiral. And I'm sure people are going to yell Captain Tommy everywhere I go for the rest of my life. And that's that's all cool. The uh, um, I'm really happy with Spanks Calhoun. I'm really happy with the direction he's taking the boat. A little bummed out at a couple of you, but you know who you are. But the rest of you are hitting it out of the park, you know, truthfully. Um, <clears throat> it's been uh, it's been a real uh, it's been a real bonus for me. Uh, to have an opportunity to uh, to take a, a couple of steps back, bless ya, and to um, and to get you know a, a really good breath of uh, oxygen in my lungs, right? Anyone else doing taxes today? I am not Nancy, but I'm probably going to be doing them on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, Cheech, good to see you, Cheech. It is a new day. Can you, can you see the picture of Cheech? Cheech looks familiar. He reminds me of. Who? Uh, a uh, OT8 from uh, from our past. Oh, shit, doesn't he? Look, doesn't that look like a little like you know who? Don't say it out loud. Tyra, smiling. Good to see you. Hey, Bridge, 1872. It's a good year. For real. You may not believe this, but I have a watch that was built in 1872, and I have been working. Oh, that says Creech. Oh, geez, what did I say? Cheech. I'm not saying awesome, very good, was it? I was looking for a it's it, no, it's Cheech Rhino. Okay, there we go. Wicked. That's funny. Brianna Miller, what day is tax day? If I'm not mistaken, today uh, is tax day. You know what's funny? I'm wearing tomorrow. Spanx's watch. I'm, I'm sitting in his chair. I'm wearing his watch. Yeah, it is tomorrow. Yeah, I am. Like I. It does look. Uh, it, you look a little like an old friend. It's Cheech. Good. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing Spanky's. Uh, I'm wearing Spanky's watch. I'm sitting in Spanky's chair. Oh, hello, Reese. Relatable Reese is in the house. Bye, you, babe. Good to see you. Uh, twin forever. Well, since Reese is here, um, there's going to be a related boat later today. Um, and uh, Scooby Lee says, for most states, it starts today. Lovely. Love taxes, right? Good stuff. Uh, I am going to be getting into. Um, I am going to be getting into. Uh, it's good to see you, Cheech. I'm glad you're here. I don't think I've said hello to you before embarrassing you, but I'm glad that you're here. And the only reason I threw that out, Cheech, is your visage reminds us of a uh, of a, uh, a friend from long ago. You just kind of look like somebody that we knew. Lori, good to see you. Sandy Wendy, glad you're here. Stacy Sullivan, what's happening? People, uh, on the related boat, I want to really get into a whole lot of details about what's been going on in uh, in my life, right? Because um, this, I don't think this is the place for it, believe it or not. 
funny. But I really don't think this is the place for it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to tell you a little bit so that people around here aren't confused or offended if I've been um, anything. Uh, but uh, I've been uh, been open about so much with you guys. Hey, Kristen Melinda, good to see you. Glad that you're here. We've been waiting for you. Ali, you same with you. Good. You're good to see you. We can start now. Body illusion. Mona. Good to see you. Did you? Kristen Melinda? Yeah. Kristen Melinda went live last night? Yep. I am not happy. Cannot believe nobody told me this. I would have jumped on that in a heartbeat. Was it great? Yeah, it sure was. I believe that. Well, now that we all know that, did you hear that, everybody? We should be getting over and checking out Kristen Melinda. Uh, Johnny Scoble has officially given her the uh, the the thumb up of, uh, of approval. Now, I want to tell you something. Um, Tommy Stiggs show brought you. I want to tell you something. Tommy Stiggs is a great dude. I'm really looking forward to um, to doing a show uh, here with Tommy Stiggs. The day is coming where Tommy and I are going to do a, uh, a show together. If he if he's willing to do it, the guy's a rock star. But if I can get him on here, um, that's uh, that's a dream uh, interview for me. Believe it or not, that's that's probably in my top three dream interviews. Um, yes, Reese says love you guys and please visit us on the related boat. The related boat's going to be a lot heavier than this. Um, uh, and Reese, you uh, need to tell them the name of your uh, hat maker because, and, and you know, what's funny is I've had someone else ask me that already. That's the second, unless that's the same person. And you've asked me once before that could be the, uh, that could be the case. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but um, Trimbot, good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. Johnny, you got a hello as well. Um, uh, so here's the deal. I have been uh, very open about um, cognitive decline, something that we've talked about a lot on the uh, on the boat, probably more than I want to talk about it. But I have early onset dementia. Right? I mean, that's a shitty way to say it. And I like I use a bunch of other ways to put it because that one just sounds so damn awful. But that's really what it comes down to is I've been diagnosed with early onset dementia. And uh, like anybody, I think, that would get diagnosed with early onset dementia, I studied it and then started to cut out everything in my life that could possibly hasten that process. And I have started to do things in my life, contrarily wise, that will slow that process down. It's okay. This is not news to anybody on the boat, right? I mean, honestly, it's not. We've been talking about this for years. We've been starting this since when I started the channel, we began talking about this. So um, I am excellent. I am so far ahead of where I am supposed to be, right? I got diagnosed in prison and the doctor says things like, well, you know, what's going what's gonna to steal your brain quicker than anything else is watching television. I haven't looked at one since, right? He said, if you read books and really get into that, you can stretch this out for a <laughs> really long time, right? Um, so... I did all of that, right? Uh, Cheech, Google it. There's a million and a half sites that can tell you every single thing you need to know, but some of them are going to be real obvious to you. Quit drinking, get tobacco out of your life, right? Particularly cigarettes more than anything else. There's a lot of research concerning what tar um, can do inside the body, but uh, there's a lot carrying extra weight right? My body mass index. I have been losing weight. There are people that there have been all kinds of jokes about what disease I got or this or that. Um, I'm telling you the disease I got. I've been telling uh, people about this for a very, very long time. The early signs. I had so many concussions, um, Brianna. Um, sugar is a massive thing to uh, eliminate in your diet. Absolutely massive. That's one of the things that they will say. Uh, Mona says, what's the sign of it? You know what? Um, or that is the sign of it. He, the I used to get up in the morning, right? Go about my day, do everything that I did. And then one day I was sitting and having a conversation with a friend of mine. And it was just the silliest thing in the world. But I was talking about my dog and my dog was very much alive and very much at my house with my wife. And I could not come up with the dog's name. Silly, right? Not a big, not a big thing. This kind of thing happens to everybody. But, um, I talked about the dog six minutes earlier on a telephone call and nothing like this had ever happened to me before in my life. And I kind of chalked it up, but I had already begun to um, journal at this point. Shortly after um, this, uh, a football player 
took his own life after um, he drove up. You, you probably remember, but he drove up and then um, took his own life at uh, the uh, training facility that he used to uh, play ball at. Uh, they started to talk about chronic traumatic encephalopathy, right? CTE. You can't be diagnosed with CTE while you are still uh, breathing. They have to, they, the, what they do to the brain in order to, uh, to, to declare that you have chronic traumatic encephalopathy requires slicing your brain into very, very, very thin slices, right? So that can't be, uh, that can't be done until you're no longer, um, in the, uh, in the, the game. So, uh, whilst in prison, um, they put you through all these tests all the time to make sure that they're going to save money treating you. Right. Cause they they assume you're going to live forever. I mean, you can't smoke, you can't drink people in prison live a really long time and they end up costing the prison a whole lot of money. So they try to really, they, they do try to, you know, take one tons of pictures and tests and all that. And I had a brain scan that, um, showed a uh, just a black, spot on it which at first looked like a friggin tumor and scared the hell out of everybody right but it wasn't a tumor it was just a um infarction which is literally just death right so i have this spot on my brain that is dead and it's dead from getting a bunch of brain you know smacking against my skull and this is from doing backflips on skis which is what i did right um did a lot of back uh, backflips on um on skis and if you over rotate one you your back hits the ground and then your head hits the ground and it's called a counter coup concussion so your brain goes to the back of your head with all the water and you're cool but when it comes forward all that water is still in the back and your head and your brain hits the front of your skull and this is what happened it is what it is i did a bunch a bunch of stupid things so did he right we just got a lot of concussions as kids and i think that at the time boys got a lot of concussions as kids i think we were probably a little dumber than the average boys but there you go now i've been open and honest about this this is nothing that anyone on the boat has not heard before if you've been on the boat i've been talking about this for years right so i started doing stuff like journaling my butt off because journaling becomes a separate way of inputting things into my brain so that I remember them. It's not just a matter of having an external hard drive as a backup. The stuff that happens to me during the day, if I write it down and then I read it, it does something different in terms of allowing me to re retain some of that. If I don't do that, whatever happens today is gonna be gone tomorrow, right? So if you're losing stuff, start writing because I promise you, you can really change your life if you start writing what happens to you. It really will change you. Now, it's going to happen to everybody to some degree, right? The good news is I knew this was coming way before anyone else did. I would imagine there's a bunch of people just like me watching TV today, right? All day long. Um, and they're doing all of the things that, you know, drinking. If you have, um, yeah, Johnny has some symptoms. He does. If you have, and I'm sorry if I'm talking about you. I should have let him answer that, I guess. Um, Shambot says, it is what it is. Tommy, my brother is showing these symptoms. He played football starting at 10 years old, all the way through high school and in the Navy, lots of concussions and trauma, PTSD. He's 40 brain stuff is hard. It gets easier if the person involved can admit that they have brain stuff, right? It's a really hard thing to do. Um, it is really difficult to come to the, uh, to the grip of, all right, there's something wrong with my dome. Right. Because honestly, it's the. Uh, it's the um, waving white flag is what it is. Yeah, it's waving the white flag. It really is. And then you have to and then you have to start admitting all of the things that 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 you're slipping. And you know what? God forbid, you, you know, what if you have a, a significant other that you're really close with? If my significant other were to say to me, you said this yesterday. I really can't argue that point. Right. And that's a bummer merely means you got to put an awful lot of faith in your significant other because there's no there's no uh, losing a bet anymore. I mean, an argument anymore. He's losing weight and trying to be healthy, but he's scared. Shambot, I get that. And you know what? Tell him to stop by here, right? Tell him to watch a couple of the shows that um, that where I talk about this because I'll tell you something. The greatest thing, the greatest way to get this uh, under control is to tell people you have it. I mean it. Letting people know that this is an issue in your life will stop half of the damn issues in your life. I'm not kidding.
But what happens is we try to hide this from everybody, right? Which makes you look like what? You're either a jerk, right? I mean, very often they think you're a jerk because you say, yeah, I'll do something um, on Tuesday or I will, uh, I'm going to get a hold of you or I'm, or I'm going to do, uh, to do this, you know? Uh, and, and then you don't follow through. And it's not because, you know, it's because you don't, you don't remember, right? Even if you're writing it down, sometimes you go and you write down and you look at what you, and you go, shit, like I wrote this and I don't even remember what I wrote, right? And I don't remember why I wrote it. So you have to, you have to really start changing how you do everything, but you better tell the people in your life that you're slipping. And there are things that you can do then, right? To, uh, to, to change up how you do what you do so that you do it a little bit differently and you do it a little bit better. If you're slipping and you're not journaling, have a great life. I wish you the best of time. And hey, you ain't going to have much of it. I promise. It, it'll kill you. I'm not being glib. It will kill you, right? It's like if you have horrifically damaged hearing as you get older, right? You know, if you don't go and get that hearing fixed, your brain starts to shut down. Seriously. And what we do is we go, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. My dad did it. And my dad, I, I bet you my dad would have been alive three or four more years if he had gone and got hearing aids when he was in his 50s. But the things that we do, because we don't want people to know. So I'm here to tell you right now, I have a, a brain disorder and I've been open about it. However, I have been, um, because of what I have and because of my diagnosis, I can take medication. You can't, right? This is not a good thing. This is a bad thing. And technically, what they call it is an end-of-life diagnosis. And I don't have an end-of-life diagnosis, but that's how you get these medications. It's normally for people who have uh, the big C, right? People who have cancer, people who have um, Parkinson's, people who have things that, and, and God forbid, there's something out there that could help you, but you got to wait 12 more years while they get approval. They passed a bill that allows you, in certain cases, with the right diagnosis, to have an opportunity to try these drugs before they go through the entire approval process. I have tried three so far. Um, the first two did nothing. And, and by the way, this is not a double blind. There's nobody getting a sugar pill, right? That's not the part of this testing that they're doing. They're giving you the drug. So it did nothing. It could have been a sugar pill. I mean, it did nothing. Now, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a drug addict, right? So you hear, these are drugs that are going to help me concentrate. What's the first thing you think? Speed. speed, right? First thing your head goes to, because if it's a drug that helps you concentrate, it's speed, right? That's just what it is. So, and no matter how much I change to try to become a better person, there's going to be that little thing in the back of my mind that goes, speed, speed, this is a drug, right? Well, it wasn't. I mean, technically, I guess it was, but it wasn't enough to feel it. There was the third drug that I was taking. You could not feel the speed uh, in it. There was no jitteriness. Um, but it's time released, right? And it's a 10 uh, hour or some such crap time release drug, maybe eight, 10, something like that. Okay. The concept is like this, right? Here's your pill. The time release comes off of the outside of the pill. And what you have left is the, the stuff that gets you high or the stuff that gets you well, or the stuff that gets you clean or the stuff that uh, is an antibiotic or whatever, right? So this starts to release into my body, right? Over a period of time, that goes away, right? Then it literally, as that wears away, there's more underneath it. So it's the never-ending gobstopper. You understand this concept, right? Are you with me? Okay, so the longer this thing's in your stomach, the more you eat it down, you're going through peaks and valleys of you got the drug in your system or your, your body's working on the time release, right? Eating its way through the next layer of time release. The reason I'm telling you this, because it sounds boring, but the reason I'm telling you this is because when it started to, to taper off, when the drug was not pumping in my body, I was doing what is akin to rapid cycle bipolar um, cycling. What was happening to me is when this drug was in my system, I was thoroughly convinced that this stuff was absolutely the wonder drug of wonder drugs. This stuff was enabling me. You remember, like I would, I would start to go out to the car and I'd look at him and go, forgot my wallet. Things that, things that I just get two miles down the road and do all the time. I was just, and everyone around me was noticing it. 
Reese noticed it, right? Johnny noticed it. My mother noticed it. Spanx Calhoun noticed it more than anybody. Man, I was just firing. A lot of you wrote and said, you just seem like you're doing a lot better. And I was, right? And I was journaling about it. The trouble is every time, every time that drug started to wear down, I became an asshole. Pardon me. Quickly. Right? Now it got to the point where I'm throwing around, you know, 65 uh, pound trash cans in the garage, right? Not yelling at anybody. I'm not, you know, I was, I was very specifically angry at, uh, at me and at things. And it's, um, and I think as you're doing it, you know, that this ain't working right. You know, that this is a side effect that is really, really bad. But the other part of it, right? For, for four hours, man, you felt like you were 27. You know, I'm, I'm remembering things. You can go back and watch shows and watch me get off of the subject and come right back on and get off the subject and come right back on. And I felt like, I felt like a public speaker. I felt like I was killing it. I really felt like I was killing it. And then I got a text message uh, that said, do not take, and there's a bunch of letters and initials for this stuff. They don't have a name for it. Stop taking this. Do not take another one. Whatever you do, right? Do not take another one. You need to contact um, the, uh, the doctor at nine when the office opens. Do not take any more of this medication. Why? Because 41% of the people who are taking it are reporting symptoms that mimic rapid cycle bipolar disorder. Now, I didn't, I know people who have rapid cycle bipolar disorder. One of them reached out and said to me, I don't know what's going on, but you look like you have, rapid. <laughs> they, they literally reached out to me and said, you are displaying every symptom I have. I don't know whether or not you realize that. True story. Now you would have thought that maybe at that point I would have read that and said, Hey, maybe I should look at whatever I'm taking, but I didn't because, you know, for four hours at a whack, I was feeling like Superman. And there was just that short period of time that I wasn't. But that short period of time, um, main house, the med I'm talking about has a bunch of um, initials and numbers. It does not have a name yet because it has not been approved to be uh, sold on the market. I am able to take, um, I am able to be in a program where you can take a medication that is not yet on the market, right? Um, and uh, this is a program that I was super happy to be a part of. Um, I'm a little less <laughs> enthusiastic about the program today uh, as I was. Um, again, nobody in this program was getting uh, a placebo. Everybody in the um, everybody in the program uh, was getting the real thing. There were a group of people in this that um, that are all drug addicts, and I I wonder how many of them relapsed. You know. Because this is, um, <clears throat> there are non-stimulant drugs for ADHD. The one I take is actually a blood pressure med used off-label. Trust me, it's not speed. I know, I know. But uh, the 99 out of 100 drugs made for concentration are speed. The, uh, the fact that they are making non-stimulant drugs for ADHD, they're doing so that there is an alternative out there that's not speed. Um, I can't take ADHD medication. It doesn't, I mean, I could, but it will not do anything for what I have. Um, what I have is, is, uh, is different. Right. Um, and I, I bet I know the blood pressure, um, medication that you're on for, uh, for ADHD. There's, there are a lot now of options that are, uh, that are non-stimulant, but as a drug addict, when a doctor says, we're going to be putting you on a drug to help with your uh, your concentration and your cognitive, right? Most people go Ritalin, um, Adderall, dextromethamphetamine, um, dexedrine, benzedrine, right? Like the, the stuff that comes to mind that is written for people who have concentration issues 99 out of 100 times uh, tend to be amphetamine-based, stimulant-based. Um Shelly, yeah, you know, on the bright side, I don't think that um, I got to a point where I was um, 
dangerous to anyone, right? Because I'm a big dude. Uh, but what Kristen Melinda says is, um, wow, that sounds, uh, that even sounds like uh, what folks with bipolar say about enjoying the mania at times. When, when this drug was working, right? I would be in my room and I would have a computer going in front of me and I would have a iPad going next to me, right? And I would be taking notes and journaling with my phone going. And I felt like I could do all of it. It was really phenomenal. It really was. I felt like Superman. And I really thought, man, this is it. And I was, I was talking to the doctors about what happens if this stuff doesn't get approved, right? Then what? And I was lying to the doctor about how much of it I was taking so that I could uh, stock up on it. And I even, you know, when, he, when I went in, the, I said to him, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually taking more than that. And he said to me, are you lying so that you can stock up? Because I'm fine with that, but I really need to know what you're taking. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm trying to. So I got to throw a bunch of it out because obviously I can't uh, I can't take this, you know, stuff because the um, the um, the negative of this is absolutely incredible. The um, the uh, negative is um, the Cindy. I, I mean, I guess you could say that, you know, to be sure I'm in addiction mode. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, and I'm going to be until the day I die, right? That's not, that's never going to change. Uh, I do what I can uh, to put things in place so that I don't make the same mistakes again and again and again and again. Um, yeah, Christy, this, uh, I've been very, very open with the, um, with the doctors concerning everything there is to know about me. They know about the lifeboat. They know about all of this crap. So, um, on the, you know, I, I don't know that that's necessarily, um, a good description this time though, Cindy, and I'll tell you why. Um, I didn't eat, I didn't eat tons of them, right? I wasn't abusing this drug. I was taking it exactly how they told me on the label. The very first day that I got this drug, uh, I took two, right? I was supposed to take one. The very first day that I realized that I, that I uh, got it, I took two for no other reason than to see if it was going to make my heart race. I wanted, they're not telling you what's in it. If they tell you what's in it, it's going to skew the notes you take on it and all kinds of other stuff. You understand? If they say, Hey, this is a stimulant, you're walking off looking for stimulant effects. And that's probably what you're going to find because that's kind of how we work. So I had nothing to go on. And yeah, I took a couple of them, but I never did it again. So I don't really feel like I was, um, I don't really feel like I went into my normal um, abuse mode, if that makes sense. It's, um, Thanks. So, uh, this is a, it's a cool color for me. Um, uh, no one was in, no one was in danger. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little bummed out on anyone that thinks anyone was in danger. Truthfully, it's not something that, you know, in my, uh, my career, my career isn't violent. I'm a thief, right? Now I'm not telling you I haven't hurt people because I have, but I'm not a violent person. Right. Every person I ever hurt had it coming or in the depths of my depravity, I hurt them for money. But I'm not a guy that explodes and does things that, uh, you know, it's not who I am. And I, and I feel the need to point that out because I spent 13 years around people exactly like that. I spent 13 years around people that hurt people. And then you had to tell them afterwards what they did because they literally would go into these modes where you're like, what the hell just happened? Oh, the trash can took a beating. I'm not going to lie. Um, the, uh, the trash can took a beating more than once, more than once. So the, uh, the, I'm not seeing this. You understand? It sounds like it should be really obvious, right? But everybody has a bad day. Everybody becomes, um, pissed. Uh, occasionally. Placebo is massively important in research, right? But that's not what we're doing at this part of the uh, of the juncture, right? They're doing double blinds. I promise you all of that. But you get to a, what this is, right? What this is, is Hail Marys for people whose um, afflictions are progressing at a rate 
that they don't want them to, to miss out on an opportunity for something that can change or prolong the quality of their life. Yeah. So I, trust me, I, I, I get the concept of the double blind. I promise. Um, done a, a ton of, uh, of reading on research and studies and whatnot, probably more than the next cat. Um, so yeah, but, uh, I'm fond of the name Becca too. I have a, uh, I have a relative named, uh, Rebecca, call her, uh, Becca and she's, we were talking about her this morning. She an odd bird. She really is. One of the greatest people on earth. But if you take her and compare her to every single other person that we know, it's so like dropped her off. It's house. like she got dropped off from a different planet. Um, did did family recognize a change? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But. Um, I looked like the old Tommy, right? I looked like I was 45, not 54. That's what it looked like to everybody around me, except for the times when it wasn't good, right? Guess what? I have times when it's not good, when I'm not on medication, right? I'm not, I've always struggled with, uh, with you know, my, uh, my patience has been an issue my entire life right? I don't hit people. I don't explode. The boy, there's been a lot made of this recently too. I'm not a violent person. I don't explode. There's none of that crap. Um, I get, I get hot, right? But it's always aimed at me. Is that not the truth? Like I'll get in the car and drive away if, unless I'm swinging at somebody, but if I'm swinging at somebody, I assure you they had something coming. Have you ever seen me hit somebody that didn't need to get hit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah. One. In that fight in Windsor, I had that guy. Oh, yeah, no, you're you're right. Okay. Okay, now, let me. This is important. This is a very important designation because um, you're going to love those strawberry balls. One ounce of them in milk in the morning will change your life. One ounce of them, like cereal and milk in the morning, is you're done for the day. I promise you, it will change everything you do for the rest of the day. so, yeah, I did punch somebody that I probably shouldn't have punched. But I need to say this because now here's the person when he said, yeah, you have done that. The person that I punched was trying to fight my brother. Yeah. In, in my defense now, should I have punched him? It was a really bad idea. When I punched him, all hell broke loose, right? Like my brother kind of had things in a situation. He had this guy kind of held and he was trying to sort of talk the, the party you know, everybody into calming down and we were just going to leave. But then the dude he was holding kind of tried to get him with one. And I thought, well, I'm not having that. So I did punch a guy that he was holding in a headlock. That was it. That's the only time in my entire life. good too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, I'm addicted to the strawberry balls midnight show. I I eat them all day long. Really good. I eat them all day long. I, I have this little plastic thing that you can put them in. So I carry them around and yeah, I eat them all day long, but I absolutely love it. Uh, why do you continue to utilize military valor? Hey, check it out. We got an asshole. Um, why the Admiral actually was named by other people uh, corsets. Why don't you tell me why it bums you out? Huh? See, corsets and curls really isn't bummed out. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not, this isn't a drug reaction thing. But these are, these are, uh, I've dealt with these people in the past. Yeah. Thank you, relate, uh, Relatable Reese. Um, I think Relatable Reese tried the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I mailed my balls to uh, to Reese as well, the strawberry ones. Uh, Kestrel42, good to see you. They're my favorite flavor. Uh, you know, the the fruit, the uh, the white ones? I dig yeah, those as well. You know too. what? The uh, apple pie is very good if you eat like cereal, but it's not as good if you eat the dry. <laughs> um, you know what, Shelly? They're kind of funny at this point. Honestly, I threw that one up there for craps and giggles. No, you know what? Corsets and curls isn't even real, people. It's all good. They're they're <laughs> lighten up, Francis. You know, Sorry, was that, that who was it? Who said that? Who, check and say who said that. I guarantee you, I know who said that. Uh, well, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to remedy that. I was pretty sure I took care of that, but uh, well, strawberry balls for it was Sheldon, wasn't yeah. it? No one I think is in my tree. I mean, it must be high alone. Let me have a corset and curls. Yeah. 
Who hurt you, dude? No, you know what? Of course, it's in, of course it's in curls is a fake. It, 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 it's a fake. One of your good friends in the Air Force, ROTC, lost his life in battle. God bless him. I've lost about a dozen friends in battle. I have. I've lost 10 times that to drug addiction, right? Now, this is a virtual boat. You're on it. Well, you were. If you have a wrench, get corsets and curls well, off do, this boat. It. Would you? Yeah, yeah. yeah, get corsets and curls off this boat because you're an asshole. And I don't really yeah, need you're gone. And gone. How about that? Isn't that fun? Seriously. I promise I'm real. And I promise you're gone. How's that? Say ya. Bye-bye. And that, people, is how we do it. Here's the deal. If you're offended by the fact that somebody calls me Admiral, you're on the wrong channel. Right? You're on the wrong channel. Get a life. I'm the father of the captain of the lifeboat. Yeah, he's a jerk. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Here's the great thing. No lie. I'm not bummed out. And I'm telling you that yesterday, this I probably would have lost my mind. She How? rarely ever does that. No, ever. she do, she normally does it as soon as the show starts. But mid, mid show, do you hear that, people? Me won't hear it because she's a lady. She is a lady. Squirrels using the uh, restroom. But if you've been here long enough, you could throw a two up in here. If you have seen, if you have heard me say, hey, that squirrel using the restroom or chastise squirrel for using the restroom, put a deuce up there. Why, thank you. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if people get offended when you see it uh, in um, <laughs> off into the forever. Uh, now, back to my balls. <clears throat> if you were to click um, on the drop down menu. See what I did there? Huh? Yeah. I, I said that right. I said that right without medication. Um, if you go into the drop down menu, you will see a thing uh, and it will take you right to the protein bowl. Why, well, thank you so much. What a kind thing to say. Spike. Hey, Spike. Thank you so much. Spike says, hey, Tommy, we'll be saying Buddhist prayers for you. I'm here and on the uh, related boat, and we're here for you. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much that means to me. You know what? I mean that. Um, yeah, you know what, Nick Mac? Here's the deal. Uh, as far as the uh, as far as the admiral thing goes, right? <laughs> um, poor Admiral Akbar. It's a trap. The uh, as far as the the um, all of the military stuff goes, right? Captain, we, we went through all of this stuff. It's why I took the hat off because I do not disrespect uh, people in the military. The people who served them, my father was in the military and served. And I am, I am super respectful of people who are in the military. So I take that seriously. But that, And if you were a serious discussion and you wanted to have a real discussion on that, we would have one. But that person wasn't doing that. That's a joke, right? That person can say that they're, that they're real, but that's, we've been doing this long enough that we know, we know what that's about, right? The, the, it's such an irrelevant uh, subject matter. I remember when I took off general, yeah, we talked about that, but I, I didn't pick it. I didn't pick Admiral. I would have picked Commodore if you want to know the truth. I've been, uh, I've been, I was playing with Commodore because I thought that was just really cool. Um, but uh, I woke up one morning and I found out I was the Admiral, uh, not admirable, right? That's a joke from, uh, from family guy. If you caught that one, that's a, uh, that's a family guy joke. Um, they asked me what I was. I said at first I was a stowaway. Right. I don't think I need a, you know, first mate. I think pilot works good. That's pirate, like, you know, Jack you, Sparrow thing going. Well, you always kind of had that thing going, man. <laughs> I want to speak to the commissioner. We're uh, we're working on that. We're working on that. Uh, you know what? The, I, the military people. I am ashamed. I've said this my entire life. I am absolutely ashamed of uh of the fact that um that i didn't serve it's something that that i swear to god i wrestle with because when i see people spanks calhoun i uh you know his throat's killing him so i you know, said to him sleep in don't get up and watch this right if you're gonna if i'm gonna take the show then sleep the hell in and let your uh your your throat heal but when spanky was a little kid hello brandon calloway good to see you my brother hope uh you're still doing well uh i used to take spanky up to the um to the airport Right. We used to go there every weekend to watch soldiers coming back from the war because I wanted him to see that. And he would sit and, you know, we would we would uh, salute and we would, we would clap and we just, you know, you don't know who's going to show up when those guys were coming back or how many people were going to be there. And there was a couple of times where we showed up and there weren't many people. And, 
you know, it was, I always felt pretty good that we were, uh, that we were there, but I wanted, you know, Spanky to, uh, to see that, you know what I mean? It's, uh, no, I have a massive amount of respect for, uh, for people, um, who served. You see that, that, uh, shirt behind me, right? That shirt is from Captain Kirk, right? So corset, right? Captain Kirk back there. That would be James Tiberius Kirk. I don't think we need to be pissed at him because he's, he's not real either. He doesn't, the SS Enterprise ain't any more real. My boat is way more real than his ship. When 9-11 happened, I tried this to enlist. That's a true story. I tried so hard. Me and a friend of mine named Jeff. We even tried bribing people. <laughs> me too, Tommy. Almost joined the Navy right out of high school, but then I found out I was going to be a father. And I didn't join. I regret it a lot. You know what? I... I feel it when I see other people um, who served. That's when I, uh, that's when I feel it. I just, I feel like, you know what? I was being an ass while they were paying for it. Right. I was running around doing drugs, sleeping with everything, just being an idiot while they were paying for it. And I think that's really messed up. And I have nothing but respect for people that have been in the military, which is why jackasses that want to act like I don't, aren't going to be here very long. You know what I'm saying? I'm not playing that game. Cause I'm not that guy. I've never been that guy. In the Navy is now stuck in your head. You had that coming. In the Navy. Sail the seven seas in the Navy. You know something, Boston? Sarah from Boston. You know, I don't know. Corsets and curls could be the kind of person to give Steubing a hard time. <laughs> I could see that coming. You got to admit, Merrill Steubing was a stud. The trips captain. Good to see you, man. Long time no see. Long time no see. There we go. There you go. I, I like them apples, huh? How do you like them apples? Yeah, I uh, I did not have a desire to serve until um, the uh, when the Twin Towers got hit. Uh, I think I just wanted to shoot somebody. I'm not a very good person. And that kind of really had me set off. Um, <laughs> Scoop says corsets and curls is giving one of my favorite goth attire pieces a bad name. We're not going to let that happen, That's Scoob. Awesome. I promise. We're cleaning that up. Johnny the Buccaneer. Might work. That might work, actually. Um, your phone just changed a light adjustment. Do you hate when that happens? I told you about my phone. My phone will get so dark that I can't find, I can't right. even see to it. find the button to make it brighter. With all trouble your phone gives you, you could drop your phone off of the top of the Empire State Building and I think it would survive. I've seen you bounce that thing off of cement, slate, concrete, you everything but water. And it it just takes it. It's true. A very merry unbirthday to you. To you. A very merry unbirthday. Yes, it is my unbirthday. And thank you for noticing. Mine too. Kestrel is a deserted island. Well, we will not have that. No man is an island and no swear, man is a rock. Chris, I was just thinking that, but you have heard of me. I swear to you, I was just thinking that in my head and she dropped it. That's awesome. Uh, you know what? Kristen has done that to me before too. Yeah, she's, uh, she's interesting that way. That's such a great line. Spike, that would be lovely. Thank you. Um, always, Spike. I am, uh, I am blessed. Mona says, uh, Kestrel says, I am a rock. I am an island. Uh, you're not. You're not. Right? My name was Rock for a really, really, really long time. Nobody's a rock. I promise. You know that song? Yeah. Uh, I, remember, Tuesday, I, I remember being a kid. In like that, and that made me want December. to be an island. It made me want to be a rock. Yeah. That was bad. I am alone. You can always send emails, people. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to see them, right? I've got people that are really trying to make sure that I'm protected these days, but fire them away. I probably will see some of them. Um, Tara says, now that I know what's wrong with you, I want to know what's right with you. Well, that's on you, kid. I promise you I'm never going to sit and tell anybody what's right with me. <laughs> I promise you. Uh, even, if, even if I could figure it out, it's probably not something I'd say out loud. Yes, the Audrey Gore. People in charge of civilian boats are called captains. So are people who make a crap load of money in any particular kind of business, right? Captains of industry. We have researched Captain ad nauseum because of the number of jack wagons 
who felt like, ooh, we got one we can get him to talk about for a half an hour on every show. And then I just said, you know what? We're not talking about that anymore. It's been debated. But yes, it's, you know, captain is. And uh, as far as Admiral goes, if you guys named me general, I'd have fought for that too, right? You guys named the boat. You guys named me. You guys named my cat, right? So, yeah. The skipper, uh, you know what? I love the skipper. He's the greatest kid on planet Earth. He really is. And he is stepping up to the plate in a way that, uh, you know what, that I knew he would, you know? <laughs> that is a, that's a good reference too, actually. He really cares about what? I have no idea. But he cares. Um, <clears throat> Admiral is also a, fr a friend, right? Well, I am to you, Scoob. Make no mistake. <laughs> Hey, right? make no mistake, Scoob. I got you back. Uh, I like it when they call me Big Daddy. Well, there you go. Speaking of islands, Texas Sand Fest is next week here on North Padre. Y'all come out. Becky, I want to tell you something. I have never been to North Padre. Yeah. No, I've not. no, you have not. I've searched South but he has been to South Padre Island because I have been to never South Padre not. Island. Yeah. But uh, I had a really really interesting experience with federales uh and the footbridge uh there i was uh i was running in uh in a pair of four hundred dollar loafers one four hundred dollar loafer the other was gone and i was running as fast as i could for the united states border and i had never been so happy to see men with guns wearing camouflage because honestly the uh the only thing that stopped the federales were uh the the uh, boys in green who went no no get it vote for real like they they had already shook me down the federales had already taken all of my money and another batch was to, was coming along to shake me down again and i had just given him everything i had i didn't i lost a shoe decibel chaos says hey there i just logged on and heard you singing softly a simon and garfunkel song i used to listen to that song every long lonely bus ride to the ballet school i left home at 14 to attend wow I am an island. Um, I'm all over, Sarah, Sarah, I am all over. I don't care if you're microdosing or I don't care if you're doing heroic, massive uh, dosing. That's completely up to you and your doctor. However, if you are working with somebody who is walking you through a guided method, of, uh, of working on your brain using any of the disassociative drugs that we've talked about here before, psilocybin, cubensis, or, um, or, you know, MDMA or, uh, or ketamine. Again, not a huge ketamine fan. That's a personal thing, whatever. Um, I think ketamine is, um, I think it's really hard to walk the line on ketamine. It's so easy to just do a little bit more than you want and have a very, very unusual time. That's not so much fun. <laughs> Kristen Melinda's parents used to go to North Padre Island every summer. I, uh, I hit South Padre. I had such a bad time on my last trip to Padre. Say it again? I had a horrible time on my last trip there. Um, South Padre. I was surfing. I was jumping off my board. I was out far enough that there's no sandbar. You're thinking sandbars in front of you. I went to jump off my board thinking I'm in eight feet of water. There was a sandbar in front of me. I landed in six inches of water. I almost broke my ankle. Tara, what question did I misunderstand, or did somebody else misunderstand your question? Um, she calls them Simon and Garfunky, by the way. Christy, I love that. <laughs> Simon and Garfunky. Um, Tommy, maybe Johnny can help guide you through the healing journey of Vegemite. I don't think there's a really good chance of that happening. I do appreciate you uh, weighing in on the uh, on the foul yeast you can't spray. Steer a parked car, man. Your car is parked, dude. The engine seized up. You need to dive into that regiment. That's probably not going to happen. Ben, what a good dude. Bacon Bits Ben Turner says, "Can't think of any I am an island or I am a rock jokes." So I will just say, "Much love, Bacon Bits." I appreciate you. Much love to you too. Spravato is a nasal ascetamine and only administered by a clinician. 
It's two hours. Little to no disassociation helps uh, PRSD and treatment resistant depression. Great concept. You can also buy it on the street today, right? It's, it is a great concept. And when you're doing it with a clinician and they're working with you, it has, the, the results have been incredible. However, you can buy it on the street today and that's a, that's a frightening thing. And it's what happens, uh, you know, anytime something like that enters the marketplace, right? No matter how much they try to keep a, a tight hold on it, no matter how much they try to, it's going to end up on the street and it's not going to be, shh, shh, you know, I'm going to, all, all I got to do, watch, watch Johnny Scoville's face. Shh, 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 shh. Snooky. Schnookums. Snookums. We had a guy that not worked. Funny. We had a guy. It's it's funny, not ha ha funny. It's sad funny. But we had a guy that worked for us. Actually, no, he did not work, did for, not us. work for us. We were working at a. Uh, um, oh, thank you, Tara. No, I didn't. You didn't hurt my feelings or anything. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. I I'm just not. Uh, if I said to you, Tara, list me all your strengths. Do you think you could do it? I don't know. I I, I feel uh, I you feel really what? strange talking I about my strengths. My, the agent's waiting for a bio. She wants me to write about myself. She's been waiting for two weeks. I can't write a bio. Yeah, myself. no. I mean, I, I've never been I've never been very good at that. I'm a, I'm an excellent public speaker. There you go. Honestly, and I don't mean this. We're farting around. But when I get up and do what I do, I'm good at it. Um, and I'm pretty proud of that. I was an excellent skier. Other than that, I don't know that there's that much stuff I'd feel really comfortable. Uh, saying about but it, but it's it's a it is a question that makes one think to be sure that stuff should be prescribed to addicts if they eat it they get money no one will eat it because it's that gross <laughs> she's referring to vegemite and she's right micro dosing with shrooms is unreliable well um here's the thing tree hugging buddhist uh when the people that i know that are going and uh working with um uh working with people um, through guided uh, meditations with um, psilocybin aren't actually using fungus itself. They're using, they're taking it in a tablet form. It's psilocybin that has been removed from mushrooms, but they're not actually eating the fungus itself. I have always found that microdosing or macro dosing mushrooms in general are a little bit difficult to, to uh, predict. It's never really been, it's never really been a problem for me. With, with shrooms because I normally wanted to get off a lot more when I ate them anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I really enjoyed mushrooms. I've always been a huge mushroom fan. Um, anyone, uh, am an expert on, uh, on ayahuasca. Um, I am not an expert on it. Um, well, I'm not tree hugging Buddhist. I'm not bad mouth and spravato. I'm not, like I said, the, the results have been absolutely unbelievable, but it is an analog of PCP, right? I mean, we can BS all day, right? But psilocybin cubensis is not a, uh, a in any way, shape or form related to penicycline, right? But the analog of PCP is ketamine. That's scary to me because I I have my entire life abused analogs of drugs. Right. I've done the analogs of everything. And they're usually, you know, pretty much in line. I, I've I'm afraid of disassociative drugs that are so disassociative that people, you know, jump off of buildings or cut off their penises or do things like that. And PCP. Right. That's that's, you know, the drug that people normally cut their junk off. Right. Whenever you hear that story, it's not somebody that smoked a couple of bowls and removed their penis. It's usually somebody that got wet. Right. They're, you know, they're out there hitting that sherm. That stuff was the real deal, man. I bought three di double dip sherm sticks and then they jump off of the fourth floor balcony. Right. With their junk in their hand. <clears throat> I've only heard that happen once. And it's the guy from. It is. It sure he is. used to write for Wu Tang. It Wu Tang sure clans. We don't cut junk off on this channel. Well, I mean, uh, Shelly, we'd like not to. I was just uh, referring. But it but it has happened. Does DMT count? Um, does it count as a disassociative drug? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is definitely a disassociative drug. Um, you know, analog, uh, mountain girl. Analogs, 
what's the, the best definition? Um, be a really interesting way to, here's what it is. It's not, it's not the real deal, right? So what we're doing on the street today is an, is an analog of fentanyl, right? Which means that for all intents and purposes, um, it's going to test for uh, fentanyl, but it is not technically fentanyl. It is an analog. It is a, it is a part of the final construction, right? If you were to put together the final construction, this is 80% of it kind of a thing, right? Remember those, uh, right? Remember those videos online of people doing DMT and then losing it, crawling under furniture, jumping out of windows through the glass, scary stuff. I remember Angelo with his cigarettes and stringing them along fishing line in his room. I go to visit Tommy one day, his roommate, I walk in and he's got fishing line across his room. With cigarettes hanging from it. You remember that? Yes. From fish hooks. I said, what in the world are you doing? He goes, it's roommate. He was spraying his cigarettes with raid. Yes, he was. Bug spray, letting them dry, then spraying them again. And he smoked those. Yes, he was. Um, he was smart. Yeah, this dude, this dude, had, oh, an, this dude yeah. had an IQ that was closing in on two bills, right? I'm not joking. He was one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life, but did. Some of the dumbest things, bath salts are also analogs. Analogs are a different, you, you take a pepperoni pizza and put all the ingredients out on the table and then on the next table next to it, put all of the same ingredients, right? Both of us can assemble the pizzas. One, one would be an analog, meaning I didn't follow the recipe exactly how that thing was supposed to, but it's structurally, yeah, there you go. It's well, structurally it's similar enough, right? Um, it's going to differ slightly, but um, yes, they can have a similar, but possibly radically different effects, right? Now, I'll tell you something. I've done grips of ketamine, grips of it. I've done it snorting it. I've done it in needles, right? I, I've done a lot of, um, there you go. Look up, Tommy. I explained analog means it has the same ingredients, just in a different uh, proportions. Thanks, Kestrel. There you go. There you go. Um, uh, six of one. You get the idea? One way or the other, right? If you're doing an analog of fentanyl, it's killing 300 people a day. It's not fentanyl. Same crap, right? Same crap. Uh, and it gets very, very easy for everything to be, yeah, kind of Shannon Smith, except in, a, in the, the theory is in a generic, the recipe should be identical, right? It literally should be identical. They're not changing the recipe. This is, a knockoff. This, is the, this is a knockoff, meaning that they they don't really have all of the equipment necessary to do it perfect. They don't have, for instance, we had friends manufacturing ecstasy, right? And there is this flask that you have to have in the process of manufacturing ecstasy that is it's a vacuum something or other this guy el who did it for us said yeah we're gonna not we, there's no way we're buying that for this this and this reason so he said don't worry about it i can get the same thing it's not gonna be so basically what he made was an analog it was the business can i tell you something that was the first that no one was doing design the drum circuit the world, but that was cutting edge if you think about what yeah. year that was that well was and you know what's crazy is when when he uh when he handed ago? us the first one the first one didn't come out so good. How long was it? <laughs> Every bit of 30 years. The Thank first God. one, the first one we took was not what we were hoping. And we ended up, uh, everybody was a little, well, you might want to back off a bit on this. You know that? Yeah, it was awful. Yeah. Hey, are we all cool on the analog thing or do I need to uh, revisit this? Yes and no. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that that's probably as close as you're going to get right there, right? Analog drugs are like cheap street knockoffs of clothes and handbags. They look similar, but there's something not quite right about them. You know, yes, kind of. But an analog will get you just as messed up as the real deal. An analog will get you just as addicted as the real deal. An analog will get you to overdose as fast, if not faster, than the real deal, right? The real deal has, in theory, right, quality control. Every pill that goes out is going to, God bless it, have less than two milligrams in it because two milligrams will kill you. But we don't know from one batch to the next whether 
two milligrams of this particular analog will kill you, or maybe a milligram of it will kill you, or maybe a third of a milligram of it will kill you. Because what we're really quoting is alpha fentanyl, which is created in a lab, right? Yeah, analogs can be stronger than the real deal. I don't want you to think that just because it's an analog, it means that it's going to be weaker than. But that doesn't necessarily mean the case. It's going to be different than. It could be stronger. I promise. Dangerous journeyman. All right. I'm glad. I hope things are going well for you, man. I really do. Let's see. I'm going back to Illinois, though. Uh, okay. Well, are you, you're going to read it out loud to me? Yeah, or? I sure am. Okay. What do you got? I'm looking for it still. Okay. Uh, what's a good way to get negative words out of your head? In addition to journaling, I was told yesterday by someone I love that I don't make a difference in SPTV. He apologized, but the words are stuck. The words that the person said, read it again. Oh, crap. Give me just a second. Okay. Uh, what's a good way to get negative words out of your head? Um, uh, in addition to journaling, I was told yesterday by somebody I love that I don't make a difference in SPTV. He apologized, but those words are stuck in or don't. Oh, okay, good. All right, yeah. So for the first thing that I do, anytime something... By the way, anybody notice that he didn't even tell me what he wanted me to look for? And I knew exactly what you were looking for. Remind a me friend, what she... A friend gave her a hard time, said she serves no purpose in SPTV. And she if said, any, any what times... else can you do to get negative thoughts out of her? Okay. Um, for me, when I was... Um, when I find myself uh, struggling with, with a thought that I get in my dome that I can't get out, um, journaling actually isn't, uh, isn't necessarily my go-to. Always for me, right? I need to change all of the uh, input that's going into my mind. I want to change what I'm looking at. I want to change what I'm smelling. I want to change what I'm hearing. And I want it to be constant, right? So walking to me is huge. Because as I'm walking, the scenery is changing. And all of these things are bombarding the input. But... If somebody says something crappy about me, and guess what? You guys have been busy, right? The last uh, four days, you guys have been on fire saying bad things about me. So what you do is you take them and you look at them and you go, look, some of it I have to, um, some of it I have to take as, you know what? This is legit, right? This, this stuff I was taking, I was, I was pretty screwy on. And I've said some things that have hurt some people and I got to take uh, some, uh, some accountability for that. Yeah. There are some things that that were said that are legit. The things that were said about me that are not legit, I don't have any time wasted on that, and neither should you. Obviously, you know you're uh, having an effect, right, in SPTV. You know how I know? Because there ain't a person who supports that movement that isn't having an effect. If they're the people driving by and beeping at the people who are standing out there holding signs, right, the better question becomes, what the hell is wrong with a person who's telling you that? For real. Why would we care about somebody that defective, right? Because someone who would say to you, right, you, you have no effect whatsoever in SPD. Man, oh man, talk about stay in your lane. Good God, man, right? Build a lane because you don't know what you're, <laughs> what you're doing. Get in a lane. I think my son calls it take an inventory of somebody else. I think that's how Spanx calls it, right? I've never said that personally, but you know something? Hey, Miss Sunrise Dunn, significant others say things with the intent to cut. Sadly, this is the truth, right? Didn't mean what he said. It was said to hurt. And that's unfortunate, right? It really is. And it's something that at some point you got to sit down and, and, and say lovingly. Why would you say something knowing full well that you're saying it just to hurt me? Right. Cause that's not, that's not cool, but no, now, especially now that I know who said that, Holy hell, you know, you're a power, right? For the love of God. If I honestly, if I had known who, who that question was from, I probably would have answered it different. There's nobody here that doesn't think you're a, 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 a part of this movement, right? More so than I am for real. A lot of people have run me out of that movement if you want to know the truth. Yeah, don't take other people's in, uh, uh, inventory. Judge people because they sin different than you sin. Yeah. But for the love of God, 
You are one of, if, if somebody said to me, I need you to, to make me a list of 10 people, right? Your name would have been on it. And I got 20,000 people here. So I would imagine that you're getting uh, the attention of everybody involved in any of this. We had a long talk. Let's hear. I want to know what uh, he said. It was just because he was upset about other things and taking it out on me. Oh, you know what? Well, that's that's I love the fact that he was willing to admit that. Miss Sunrise, Don. Yeah, that's like a really good thing. That's number one. Now, number two, if you know that. And with all due respect, love, shame on you for holding on to this. Right. Number one, you know what he said was BS. Right. He even admitted that he didn't mean it. Right. And we can't let those words bother you. All right. So look now, no, no disrespect, but we got to do this, right? How we do this. So at this point you have slid into the role of illogical, which is okay. Cause it happens. Right. But now you're into the role of illogical. Cause you know, he didn't mean it. He already told you that. And you know, it's not true, but you're still getting it to work on you. That's fine. But we're into the illogical. And when you slide or when I slide into the illogical, I got to go back now to an external hard drive. What that means is that the eight track ain't getting it done. So I'm going to have to load stuff in there. So I literally might write 25, 35 times. This is how I am affecting SPTV. The fact, Miss Sunrise Don, that you and I and 350 people are having this conversation right now. And before this is done, 3,500 to 5,000 people are going to hear us talk about this. Obviously, you're doing stuff, right? There are people who are going to be today working on exactly the same issue you're working on because you had the courage to not suffer in silence. Well, I guess he's really off the, the, uh, the mark, isn't he? Huh? He, a great comment. He's Spock a foot to the feelings. left. If Spock had feelings, he'd be furious about how logical that was. <laughs> Show this beautiful. That's great. Uh, you know what? Shelton, you're funny as hell, man. <laughs> Again, I don't smoke pot, but if I still did, I'd like to do it with Shelton on a couch, watch a little TV, force... Uh, force Reese to do it too. That would just, honestly, like the, the perfect force him to get stoned. Cause I, I have no desire to ever do it, but that would be a funny, uh, that would be a funny uh, group and then watch something like dumb and dumber. I still struggle with my emotions overriding my logic. Of course you do Lisa Trimble. Everybody does. That's why we're here, right? That is why we're here. This is why we are here because we struggle with our emotions overriding our logic. Do you know why that happens? Eh, because only one of them is going to work at one time. Your emotions and your logic are not going to work at the same time. You're going to let one steer the boat, I promise. So you're either going to let your logic do it or you're going to let your emotion do it. And if your emotion is doing it, you got to stop the boat, man. Because you're going to, I've been doing that for four days. How did I do? It may not be logical, but words hurt sometimes more than a beatdown. Um, it takes a strong person to shake that off. Friends and support help. And you have that here. Mara makes a great comment. And it's the truth. Sure, but you were coming from a beat down way quicker. Yeah, me? Personally. I, I yeah. No, yeah. I would, I, Physically? I, I take a beat down so much easier. Any day. Any day. It's a fact. But, but we got to get good, right? This is essential as addicts, right? Because we are so damn sensitive when we get sober. We got to get good at allowing... What did we just miss? Yeah. We go check that out. Yeah. I, uh, you got to get to a point, right? Where you can say, I'm not allowing, right? I'm not allowing my emotions to make a decision and I'm not allowing things that aren't real to hurt me. Seriously. This is one of the most important things about sobriety. If it's real, then deal with it, right? If it's real, deal with it. Corsets and curls busting my balls about being an admiral isn't real. It's not going to, it's not going to cause this much discomfort throughout my day. That's just the person being a, a, a phony to try to make, you know, a point and have some fun. Person's not real. Sins, right? Things that people do against you, slights, all of these things, half of them aren't real either, truthfully. But we don't sit down and analytically look at things because you are going to be thinking with your emotions and there is no thinking with emotions. You can pretend that you're thinking, but that's not what's going on. 
what's going on is a wave of crap, right? That we end up floating on, but you need to turn off the emotions and turn back on the logic. How do you do that? Eh, with a pen and a piece of paper. For real, emotions don't write, right? You have to engage the logic part of your brain in order to write. Do you understand? In order to have a pen and start to do these things, the part of your brain that you turn on is the logic center. Yeah? We are feeling human beings and we can be hurt. We are hurt constantly. Unfortunately, we're very often hurt by things that don't make any sense. When I'm low, mean comments drag me lower. Can't figure out how to turn the emotions off. Well, we don't want to turn the emotions off, right? That's the last thing we want to do. Spock isn't really all that cool. What we want to do, right, is control them. We don't want them turned off. We just want to be able to keep them under control. We don't want our emotions to dictate our life. Now, the way we do that is we engage the higher functions of our brain, the logical part of our brain. And we do that by sitting down and writing the act of writing, right? All of this stuff that you have to do to make that process happen will engage logic. I can put the logic, the logic, I can uh, put, yeah, that one lost me, but I know, I know what you're going for there. Oh my God, my cat puked on my cashmere coat sometime last night when I was asleep and I didn't notice until now. So now I have dried cat puke on my coat. Bummer. You know, here's the good news, Trips Captain. You may not believe this, but I have had a uh, cashmere coat vomited on by a cat. The dry cleaners will knock that out. Um, yeah, anything that a cat can puke on, I think I probably had cleaned. Decibel chaos. I love hearing that. I really do. Lisa Trimble, I know you're learning, hon. I am too. People, I don't have any of this figured out. I don't. I just read all of the stuff. I know what the answers are, but it doesn't mean I do them. Right? I'm trying. Every day I'm trying. Believe that. I am trying. But I will tell you this. I'm getting a lot better. I'm getting a lot better at... Um, I'm getting better and not allowing, uh, I'm not being bummed out by things that are stupid. I'm not being bummed out by lies that people tell about me, right? All of those stupid kind of things I'm getting better at. Uh, and I'll be really honest, people, um, without rapid cycle, um, you know, drug counteractions, uh, thank you, Charlie, for all that you do. And for all you've done forever, man. Yes, I've watched this done very often, right? This is a technique that people do. Five, four, three, two, one, name five things you see, four things you feel, three things you smell, right? Things that you hear and one thing you taste. Techniques to bring back from emotional overload. These are things that people, uh, that people do. I have found, and it's different for every single person, I promise, but I have found that ridiculously cold water right? I can drink water like no one you've ever seen. I am in, in almost all things, a bit of a freak, right? But I can just pour water down the back of my throat. So if you give me like a, an eight ounce glass, I don't have to go glug, glug. I can just pour it down and it will just straight go down. And if I put eight ounces of ice cold water into me, it will completely rewire. It's like the vagus nerve gets a shock. Um, and I learned it by accident, but it is absolutely one of the greatest ways to just pull me back. Um, it's an amazing thing. Small things like this, right? Small things like this that you put into your toolkit that I'm always talking about, right? These are the kind of things that um, will end up changing you. Gatorade is better, by the way. Powerade um, is, is something that I'm really, really fond of. I drink a lot of, uh, a lot of Powerade. Um, but... I'm sorry if I uh, hurt anybody's feelings here in, uh, in the last week. I really am. Um, please, prayers for our friend in Israel. They're, they're 
shooting missiles into his country. You know, so thoughts and prayers for our friend. I love him and I don't want anything to happen to uh, to hear his beautiful family. He's expecting. So we would just like um, thoughts and prayers to protect our friend. All right. OK. Um, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be here on the boat. I'm always going to be here on the boat. I'm not going to be here on the boat um, full time ever again. I'm not. And I think that that's great. I really do. I think that's fantastic. I'm going to do a lot more yoga, right? Um, but I am going to be, uh, I am going to be doing the Relate Boat, uh, and we are doing a, a show um, this afternoon. Tell you what, without apology, I have more fun doing that show than anything I've ever done. Love it. I do. I love it. I had more fun doing that. You guys made that show a pesser, and Reese obviously makes me laugh. You know, it's, uh, it really is. Um, I think it's a great, I think it's a great avenue, uh, for us to do some really, really cool things. Hello, Christy Foy. Good to see you. Brazy girl. Glad you're here. Zippy Magadoo. Good to see you. Uh, Lumen. I think it's pretty wonderful. Matrix Rabbit. Dastardly Saboteur. Mona. Love it. Brianna. It is going to be, uh, is tonight's a call-in show? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to get with um, with Reese on that. It might be. It might be. Uh, I think it might be a call-in show. I'm not 100%. If not, the next one will be. But we're going to be... Um, yeah, I I have a lot of fun um, on the Relator Boat. I'll tell you something else, too. Um, I was snippy the last time on the Relator Boat, and I'm going to tell you right now. I put up the Relator Boat because there were people here that didn't like Reese. And you know what? You have that right but you felt like, like talking about it a lot. So there's a channel that you don't have to go to, right? But if you go there and you talk trash about her, I'm going to make you disappear permanently, right? Because you don't have to go there and watch. That's why the related boat is there. And just as friggin' fast, if you got a problem with me, I'm going to kick you off. The last time we joked and we laughed, I'm just going to kick you off. That's what the platform is for. It's for people that want to see the two of us together. So if you got a problem with me, don't go there because the, uh, the new and improved Admiral Tommy Scoville, I'm not putting up with any shit anymore. It just doesn't, doesn't need to be anymore. I'm sorry, but you know what? I love everybody here. That's kind to me, but the ones who aren't, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Don't have the patience for it. You want, you want me to stick around? Then that's how we do it. Right. Dear Marie. No, there isn't any. We're having a great day. There has been none. Well, there wasn't until now. And then you can leave it to Shelton on a drama-free day to say, what? I cannot believe it. I think you really do. If you've not understand this, Alan is excellent. I talked to him this morning. Uh, no, but I will. I talked to him last night. Alan is doing fantastic. Alan is doing fantastic. We talk almost every day. If we don't, we text every day, but we almost talk every day. Um, people, if you've not seen Caddyshack 2, then you really don't understand just how foul and vile the joke is, right? If you've not seen, they took what is possibly, right, in the top two or three funniest films ever made and then made a sequel that uh, Sophie's Choice, right? was funnier than uh, than Caddyshack 2. Schindler's List was funnier than Caddyshack 2. Are you getting this? Kramer versus Kramer was funnier than Caddyshack 2. There really is just no way to do justice to just how bad, right? The cat is chasing birds. This time of the day now, because of how the um, Tampa Bee, you've not seen the first Caddyshack? Would you, can somebody please help Becky USA find uh, my um, the protein stuff? <laughs> Almost said, yeah. Uh, the original is perfect. Zippy, don't don't do it to yourself. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. Lumen says Caddyshack too. I'd rather watch the Deer Hunter. Well played. Nice, good reference too. It had Jackie Mason right instead of Rodney Dangerfield. It had Jackie Mason. Cheap knockoff money grab that backfired. Shelly, 
I think it's safe to say that it isn't even an analog of uh, Caddyshack. And on that, people, we're going to drop the uh, the microphone. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville. The cat is chasing um, uh, birds. However, you will be seeing squirrel uh, shorts. I got a couple I'll be putting up today. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been putting up a uh, squirrel short every day. Um, I know you guys want more squirrels, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be getting that brazy girl. The fact that you've not seen it, I respect that. You know, the only person that watches it regularly is Jeremy Shelton. We know that. Sad about him, but it's the truth. I am the Admiral. We'll see you on the next one.